okay the please note the topic is modifiers we have already discussed the modifiers in in the context of subject verb agreement correct and yeah, when sorry. yeah it's okay i'll just slow it in the context of the subject verb agreement hmm. i said modifiers function as middlemen yeah and i explained some tips how to identify the modifiers ignore the modifiers yeah. and then uh, identify the subject and the verb yeah but you will follow this process only if it is a subject verb agreement question i also explained how to identify the subject verb question with the help of some markers, markers yeah. similarly today i will explain some techniques as to how to identify a modifiers question so when you know that you are working on a modifier question then you will not eliminate the middleman i mean the modifier is no more a middleman so you will consider it you will not ignore it okay then what is a modifier here the definition says the modifier describes or the modifier modifies someone okay or something someone or something this can be a noun it can be a pronoun it can be an adjective or it can be a you know it can be a verb so any of these elements could be present in a sentence so a modifier modifies or a modifier describes a noun a pronoun an adjective or a verb a phrase or a clause okay moreover a modifier could be as simple as a single word a modifier could be just a single word such as an adjective or an adverb it could also be a word group that is a participial phrase or a, a relative clause that is a complex modifier so there are so many topics in this sub topics in modifiers what are they the types of modifiers adjectives and adverbs okay how to resolve the dilemma whether you should go for an adjective or an adverb right and there are some frequently used adjectives and adverbs okay all these topics will be covering today and the types okay. of errors means modifier errors could be you know grouped into different types of modifiers different types of modifier you know mm, errors also you have essential and non essential modifiers and very often you come across you know some questions which are based on which versus present participles i hope you remember when discussing the other topics i would i would say this i will discuss in the in in a, in a separate context which versus present participle so all these things will be covered in the modified topic so there are eight types of modifiers in types of modifiers you have adjectives adverbs prepositional phrases present participles past participles these are exactly present participial phrases better you write them as present participial phrases instead of writing present participle please write present participial phrases
past participial phrases, relative clauses, infinitives, appositives. So these are the types of modifiers you come across you know, in GMAT. Now what is an adjective? An adjective is a modifier or a describing word that modifies a noun. So an adjective modifies or describes a noun. Hence the adjective is also called the adjective is also called noun modifier. Right. Now if you look at the example strong opposition. So in this example opposition is the noun. Strong is the adjective. So, adjective, the word strong modifies the noun opposition. Similarly, if you look at the second one, weak leader, the word leader is a noun and weak is an adjective. Popular singer, popular is an adjective, singer yeah. is the noun. In the second one, you have adverbs. Adverbs are? Which can change either a noun. Verb, verb modifier. That describes a verb. Also adjective, right? Exactly. An adverb can describe, an adverb can describe or modify a verb, an adjective, and and another adverb one adverb could modify another adverb so adjectives and adverbs are commonly used modifiers okay in our day to day conversation we commonly use adjectives and adverbs when i say run fast a run is the verb and fast is the adverb. Happen frequently, happen is the verb and the modifier is frequently, this is the adverb. If you observe these two examples, these two uh, you know modifiers, adjectives and adverbs, you see that the modifier and the modifier element are always together. So this is also called the touch rule. Please note the touch rule. So touch rule means the touch rule means the modifier and the element, the modified element the modified element are always together they touch each other they touch each other that is why we say huh we call it touch rule now identifying the modifier is very important once you id once you identify the modifier, then you ask yourself whether they, whether they touch each other. Third one, prepositional phrases, okay, on the table is a prepositional phrase, in villages is a prepositional phrase. I said adjectives are noun modifiers, adverbs are verb modifiers and what about the prepositional phrases? Are they noun modifiers or verb modifiers? These are called all 
all rounders please note this point the preposition the prepositional phrases are all rounders all rounders in the sense prepositional phrases could modify they could modify any element wow that means they have a broad function for example adjective can modify only nouns an adjective cannot modify any other part of speech adverb could modify every element except adjectives an adverb an adverb cannot modify you know that cannot modify a noun okay an adjective cannot modify any element except noun it can't modify any element except the noun that means it can modify only the noun but the prepositional mo modifier to the prepositional phrase could modify any element so the placement of the prepositional phrase is crucial in the sense if you don't properly place the prepositional phrase in a sentence it could modify any element it touches so proper placement of prepositional phrase proper placement of this modifier that is the prepositional phrase is very important is crucial crucial for what crucial for the meaning of the sentence uh, the meaning of the sentence what do i mean since the modifier impacts the meaning of the sentence since it modifies okay if it is not properly placed in a sentence then it might create ambiguity means confusion in the sentence creating more than one meanings similarly it could give an unintended meaning you did not want to say that it you wanted to say something but it gives you a different meaning so all these things we will discuss in the you know uh, uh, within a short time right next is present participial phrase present participial you know ing form present participle yeah, yeah. A, a phrase that starts with a present participle is a present participial phrase yeah. so walking in the garden so what does it modify it modifies the noun it touches yeah. it could also modify the verb it doesn't touch oh it's very powerful yeah. okay it, it is very powerful so i said the present participial phrase modifies it modifies the noun it touches second it could also modify the action it could modify the action of the sentence is it necessary not to touch the verb exactly even if it doesn't touch the verb it could modify the, it could modify the verb it could modify it so it's very powerful see the uh, walking in the garden if i ask you who wa who was walking in the garden what is the answer walking in the garden is what is the modifier so it's yeah. describing what it is describing the two brothers so the two brothers is the noun so if i ask you who are walking or who were walking you say the two brothers were walking that means the 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 modifier is touch, is describing the noun when i say strong opposition what is what is what is uh, uh, what is describing opposition what sort of opposition is it 
it is strong opposition and what is strong the opposition is strong so it's like strong is describing opposition uh, so but here you say it modifies the noun it touches ha it is touching na walking in the garden is touching what the two brothers okay walking in the garden is the okay. is the present participial okay. phrase okay. it is not just walking it is the whole phrase present participial phrase okay similarly if i ask you how the two brothers discussed business by walking in the garden by walking in the garden so the present participial phrase is modifying the noun as well as the action the verb that means it functions as an adjective as well as as an adverb next past participle or past participial phrase a past participle is spoken all over the world you know all the past participles what are the past participles the third forms right go went gone you say so gone done okay broken spoken okay abandoned so all these are past participles when a phrase starts uh, when a, a phrase begins with a participle i mean a past participle you call it past participial phrase so spoken all over the world okay english has become a business language so spoken what is spoken all over the world english so this is a noun okay next fourth one it is same like right? yeah yeah yes exactly next you have relative clauses we already discussed a relative clause a relative clause begins with it begins with the family yeah begins with a relative pronouns yes you said they are w family words exception being that so who where which when whose whom all these okay that all these are relative clauses so a relative clause starts or begins with a relative pronoun which is in agra this is the relative clause and remember the relative clause can describe only a noun a relative clause could modify modify it could modify only a noun say modifies only the noun so it's very simple so every time every time you see a relative clause ask yourself okay every time you see a relative clause ask yourself what is the noun before the relative clause that's all so just before which what is present the taj mahal is present so which is in agra describes what the taj mahal that's all that means a relative clause functions as an adjective a relative clause a relative clause functions as an adjective that's enough right next comes 
infinitive so what is an infinite very important yeah very important okay infinitive infinitive is to plus verb to do to it is the infinitive to do to achieve okay so similar to the present participial phrase the infinitive could modify infinitive modifies an infinitive modifies one a noun to a verb similar to the present participial phrase if i ask you uh, to score high in gmat so to score this is two plus verb this is the infinitive infinitive is this if i ask you what does this infinitive modify who who wanted to score you say harry harry so, uh, harry. so the infinitive to score modifies the noun harry okay why he joined this is the action joined is the action joined is the action if i ask you why harry joined to score high in gma to score high so to score high is also modifying the action so to score it modifies harry to score also modifies the action joined that is how i say the infinitive functions both as the adjective and as the adverb it could be an adjective modifying a noun and it could also be an adverb modifying a verb Okay, finally you have appositives. What is an appositive? Till now we have seen, we have seen, uh, sorry, till now what have we seen? Yeah, till now we have seen one part of speech modifying another part of speech. Yes, you agree? Yes. An adjective modifies a noun, an adverb modifies an adjective and an adverb or another action, something like that. An infinitive modifies a verb. Hmm. You agree or not? Yes. Now, a positive is little bit, uh, you know, complicated. Complicated in the sense, yeah. An, an appositive, an appositive is what? An appositive is a noun mm -hmm. or a noun phrase. What does it modify? It modifies another noun or a noun phrase. And both these things, I mean the positive and the element, the modifier and the element, both both of them refer to both of them refer to the same, the same thing, the same thing. This are the same element, the same element, same thing, same noun. They are not two different things. They are not two different entities. The Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. So the Prime Minister of India is a noun phrase. Narendra Modi is a noun. So the pro here, see, see, it is between two commas. Narendra Modi is two commas. I told you anything between two commas is a non-essential modifier. But here, Narendra Modi is a noun. The Prime Minister of India is also a noun or a noun free. Both are same. 
So this is an appositive. The second part, this is an appositive. Appositive is a noun or a noun phrase that describes another noun or a noun phrase. So in these competitive exams or in GMAT, whatever it may be, right, these adjectives and adverbs are used in a different way, in different forms. For example, you know strong is an adjective, you know weak, rich, all these are adjectives, okay. But uh, there are other forms of adjectives such as present participles, so shocking, breaking. When I say breaking news, did you ever ask yourself uh, what role does breaking play? You know news is news, news is a uh, noun. Okay, news is a noun and what about uh, breaking? Breaking is an adjective. Okay, running train. Okay, uh, here you have running train. Right. Similarly, past participles, past participial phrases. Look, look at broken, abandoned, spoken, stolen. Even these past participial phrase, past participles could be used as modifiers. When I say broken chair, abandoned home, here home is a noun, chair is a noun. And these nouns are being modified by past participial yeah, adjectives. Clear? Next, yes. adverb. You already know, I already explain, I already said, it can, an adverb can modify a verb, an adjective, another adverb, a phrase, even a whole clause. Adverb is so powerful, my goodness. Next. Uh, these are very simple examples, uh, you can study them later, when I give you the notes, these are, but this is a uh, slightly complicated, uh, you know, uh, sentence. I already told you, an adjective can modify, an adjective can modify only a noun. So, sometimes what happens, you see two adjectives plus noun. You come across, you know, such structures in the options, right. For example, here, you have, uh, Jesus Christ is Ezra's supposed Jewish ancestor. You know ancestor is a noun and you also know Jewish is a is an adjective. Yeah. And supposed past participial adjective like broken, taken, okay, spoken English, broken chair, something like that is past participle. So there are two adjectives and you also know that one adjective cannot modify another adjective. adjective. One yeah. adjective cannot modify another adjective. Okay. That means, uh, if I remove the, the first one, the first adjective and read the sentence, Christ is Ezra's Jewish ancestor. It makes sense. Second, I remove the second Jewish and read, Christ is Ezra's supposed ancestor. That makes sense. What is the meaning of supposed ancestor? Supposed means it is uncertain, we don't know, he is likely to be. Okay. But he is definitely a Jew, it is well known to the world that he was a Jew. So that is how it makes sense. In the second one, why do I use supposedly? Here, please note the point. When you add ly to the adjective, I mean adjective plus ly, it becomes an adverb. And you know that 
an adverb cannot modify a noun. So, adverb supposedly this is an adverb, it can modify only the adjective. You, you cannot say supposedly ancestor, yes or no? Yeah. Adverb cannot, this is a noun, adverb cannot modify a noun, please note. Yeah. An adverb, an adverb cannot modify a noun. That means, as for this sentence structure, supposedly could modify Jewish, only Jewish. So, what does it mean? What would supposedly Jewish mean? Supposedly Jewish means? What is the meaning of supposedly Jewish? Means, well, I am not sure, means it is not certain whether Christ was a Jew. That um, that does not make sense, because he is a historical figure and he is known, he was, uh, it is known that he was a Jew. How can we say supposedly Jewish? That is why this is wrong. So, this is called meaning error. So, come back again, sir. Here, here it is an adverb. Uh -huh. Here is an adverb. And Supposedly, it is an adverb. An adverb could modify only an adjective. An adverb cannot modify the noun, yeah. ancestor. Ancestor yeah. is the noun. So, it cannot modify the, okay, you cannot say supposed ancestor, supposedly ancestor, this is not possible. So, supposed could modify only, supposedly, sorry, supposedly could modify only Jewish. But when I say supposedly Jewish, then I read with the subject noun. Subject is Christ, Jesus Christ. Christ well, uh, Christ is supposedly Jewish. No, he was not supposed. He was a Jew. We can't say he was supposedly Jew. So one may say, I don't know whether he was Jew or not. That is his problem. So sometimes, you know, you need to check for the meaning of the sentence. Look at the B part now. Please look at the uh, B. Sir, 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 yeah. Instead of Jesus Christ, put in, uh, See, these are the these types are given. So here we have seen adjective plus adjective plus noun. Yeah. Supposed an adjective, Jewish is an adjective, ancestor is a noun. The, the, the second part in the B we see adverb, adjective and noun. And you know only an adjective can modify a noun. Yes. Only an adverb can modify an adjective. Correct. That means when you see this sequence, then you need to check for the meaning by modifying the noun with the adjective and in turn modifying adjective by the adverb. Mm -hmm. This is how you should check. For example, here, yeah. huh, Ajra's grandfather is his supposedly, supposedly means adverb. Yeah. Jewish is an adjective. Yeah. Ancestor, ancestor is a noun. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do I do? I simply apply the modifier rule. I know mm -hmm. that an adverb can modify an adjective, an adjective can modify a noun. So, yeah. here the adverb is supposedly, this modifies the Jewish, supposedly Jewish. Who is supposedly Jewish? Ezra's grandfather. That means, it is not certain whether Ezra's grandfather was a Jew. So, what is wrong with that? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Huh. Okay. Yeah. But 
what about this sentence Ajra's grandfather is his suppose suppose is what suppose is adjective ly when you are adding ly it becomes adverb adverb yeah and an adverb can modify only an adjective mm. an adjective can modify only a noun so this is i am checking so whether jew whether ijra's grandfather was a jew or not is uncertain it makes sense but if instead of supposedly if i use supposed and rewrite the sentence like this ijra's grandfather is his supposed jewish ancestor then ancestor is the noun jewish is an adjective adjective so jewish ancestor makes sense ejra's grandfather is his jewish ancestor makes sense now what about supposed supposed cannot modify jewish because one adjective yeah. cannot modify another adjective now supposed is also modifying ancestor but can i say my grandfather is my supposed ancestor can i say meaning of no can i say that my grandfather is my supposed ancestor can i say that how can my grandfather be my supposed okay. ancestor my grandfather has to be my ancestor no yeah yeah so suppose doesn't make sense my grandfather cannot be my supposed ancestor my grandfather is my ancestor not supposed ancestor so this is a wrong sentence so when to go for adjective adjective plus noun when to go for adverb plus adjective plus noun means that sequence this is you know somewhat high level grammar high level modifier question sometimes they will give you okay recent sale recently recent sale sometimes some options will have recent some options will have recently some options will have frequent some options will have frequently so in such case in such cases you should use this technique the dilemma that is whether it should be adjective adjective plus noun or whether it should be ad adverb adjective plus noun so only by practicing more and more questions you will know how to apply these techniques without you know uh, yeah without practicing it is not possible okay now if you look at uh, the last one okay frequently used adjectives I, i want you to remember this okay these are the adjectives which are commonly used in many competitive exams including gmat sat and all these they are corresponding frequent independent rare recent seeming separate significant supposed you know useful all these so these are adjectives and whenever you see uh, no some options having frequent other options have frequently simply know that so the frequent options are adjectives frequently options are adverbs because here the rule says adjective plus ly becomes adverb so whether you should go for the adjective option or the adverb option depends on the meaning of the sentence so this is uh, till now whatever i have explained is the background like the theory of modifiers okay what is a modifier what are the various types of modifiers how uh, no the uh, modifiers are formed what they describe all these things i have discussed now the types of you know errors you come across you know, i mean modifier errors types of errors usually you come across one of the five types sometimes you might have two questions from modifiers but if you know all the five types of modifiers then you will be on the safe side okay the first one is 
I said there are five types, misplaced modifiers, dangling modifiers, squinting modifiers, and you have modifier ambiguity, and finally you have possessions. These two are more or less same, modifier amb ambiguity and possessions. Now we will discuss all these one after another. See the name suggests misplaced, that means the modifier has to be properly placed, but in a sentence it is not properly placed, that's all. In this sentence, what is, the, can you identify the modifier? The deal was signed by the two parties in Sydney a year ago, which was not honored by either. The modifier is, uh, what type of modifier is it? It's a relative clause. Yeah. And I said a relative clause always describes, okay, a noun. So just because, this is a relative pronoun, this is a relative pronoun. Correct. Just before the relative pronoun, a noun has yeah. to be there, but there is no, where is the noun here? I don't see any noun. So which was not honored by either? Exactly what it should modify, which should modify what? Which was not honored by either yeah. should, should modify the deal, this, this, this. So this is the intended element, which is supposed to be, you know, modified by this modif relative clause, but they are not together. The modifier is not touching the element, it is, it intends to, ah, so this is called misplaced modifier. If you look at the right sentence, two years ago in Sydney, the two parties signed the deal, so the, the deal is the noun, which was not honored by either. So this modifier touches the element it modifies. The modifier touches the element. So this is called the touch rule. Here touch rule is violated. Next you have dangling modifier. So in case of a dangling modifier what happens? In case of the dangling modifier you have a, can you please identify the modifier in this sentence? Yeah. Uh, coming, out of the huh. coming out of the supermarket okay. is the modifier. What, what type of modifier is it? So coming so out of the uh, supermarket is present yeah. participial phrase. Participle. Present participial okay. phrase. Agreed. And what does the rule say about present participial phrase? The present participial okay. phrase modifies the noun it touches. touches. Yeah. Now it says coming out of the supermarket. Then what is the element here? Sets wallet. Wallet is a noun, no doubt. Yeah. But do you think the wallet was coming out of the supermarket? No. no. Then who was coming out of the supermarket? Coming out, this yeah. is the, you have a modifier coming out of the super, who was coming? Yeah. But there is no, there is no set in the sentence. This is called dangling. In a dangling modifier means you have a modifier. The modifier is present in the sentence. Okay. The modifier is there, but the element is missing. The element is missing. And the best option will supply the missing element. If you look at this one, it is supplying the missing element. What is the difference between the two, these two? Don't say that in the first sentence also set is, set is not in the first sentence. The first sentence, no, so the set's wallet, wallet is there. Yeah. Wallet. So here you have the missing element. This is the right sentence. Now what about squinting? What's the meaning of squinting modifier? Squinting means it's like looking at two different you know, directions. Right. The, uh, yeah. Squinting means looking at two di different, looking looking at two different directions. That is the meaning of squinting. So in this case the modifier is after, it is an adverb, it is an adverb. So Samna promised his children after their examinations he would take them to Switzerland. 
I do not understand whether this guy promised after their exams or he would okay whether after modifies promised. So, after is an adverb, it is an adverb. Remember after, before and when these are frequently modified these are the you know commonly used modifiers in ambiguous sentences or for squinting uh, used as squinting modifiers. So, I do not understand whether after modifies the verb promised or he would take them to Switzerland. This is ambiguous. If you look at the right sentence, un, this is ambiguous. Amb ambiguous means confusing. Unambig unambiguous, it is clear, no ambiguity. This is also clear. And see how he has made the sentence clear. Sumner promised his children that, so he used that, after their exams, so after is used as an adjective, now it has become an adjective after their exam, he would take them to Switzerland. So, it is unambiguous. After his children, yeah. So, after his, after his children's examination, Sumner promised. Here, after is both adjective and adverb. So, when he promised, when did Sumner promise? This is the action. If I ask you, when did he promise? You will say, after his children's examinations. So, here after is modifying promised. When he promised after the children's examination. Okay. So, there is no ambiguity. Now, the fourth item is ambiguous elements. So, in this case, what you see? The federal government has accepted okay, some, some employees demands. Why is it ambiguous? Because this sentence has three meanings. So, look at this one. I do not understand whether this the author means that the feather, the federal government has accepted some demands of the employees or they accepted demands of some employees or they accepted some demands of some employees. So, this one sentence has three meanings. So, the best option would be one of these three. Okay. Now, possessives. Possessives. In possessives, what happens? Uh, these are some, somewhat related to the previous one only. Uh, you know, a kind of squinting. Sorry, a kind of a, a, no, dangling modifier. So every time you see a possessive noun, see mostly the options having possessive nouns. Possessive nouns means a noun. Any noun apostrophe s. Okay. So this is possessive noun mostly they are wrong options, but you need to check them carefully, do not simply eliminate just because it is a possessive case. Same coming out of this the same question is the same uh, example I have given here, right. So, uh, I do not understand uh, how the bag was coming out of the supermarket. So, this is a wrong sentence, but here there is no possessive, this is a noun, clear. And finally, you have essential versus non-essential. See, uh, sorry, not finally. There is one more now. Uh, which versus uh, present participle? Uh, right. Now, what is this essential versus non-essential? Essential modifier means it has to remain. Means you can't remove it. You can't ignore it. Essential means you can't ignore it. It is necessary. 
people who smoke in public places should be fined. Can you remove this people, uh, the under, underlined part? Okay, this is, no, can, can you, if you remove this, if you remove the underlined part, then it would mean people should be fined. Why people should be fined? I don't understand why people should be fined. So this has to be there. If the modifier has to be there, there should be no commas before or after. Okay. No, so no commas. If you put commas here, here a comma, here a comma, then it will mean that everybody should be fined. I don't know why. So if you can't, I mean, uh, put commas between the relative clause. I mean, you can't place the relative clause, that is, who smoke in public places between two commas. Now, look at this example. Tim's wife, who is well educated, manages the company. Here, why have we placed uh, I mean, the non, the modifier between two commas because this is non-essential. Yeah. Okay, Tim's wife manages the company. It makes sense, yeah. even if I remove it. You know, if you remove these two commas like this, and if you say Tim's wife who is well educated, who is well educated, if you remove the commas, then it becomes essential yeah, modifier. So it, manages, yeah. it becomes essential modifier. Yeah. The meaning changes. It is essential means, it, it is essential means, Tim has many wives. See how the karma is so, you know, I mean, so important. It mm. means Tim Tim has mm, no, more than one wife. Mm. So that is how the meaning would change if the modifier becomes essential. Now, third one, the E field tower, okay, the E field tower, uh, which is in Paris. This is not necessary, non-essential. Okay, I wanted to remember, you know, uh, only two things for essential and non-essential. One, for every non-essential modifier, the element is popular, it is well known and it is unique. The second one is the element is unique. Means there is only one such thing. There is only one such noun. There is one, the final one is there. What is the last one? You remember? You know what is which, which is a relative clause, I mean relative pronoun. And uh, you also know that uh, uh, the relative clause or whatever relative pronoun always describes the noun that comes before. Before. Yes. This is the only rule for relative clause. So, developing countries such as India and Pakistan have adopted socialism, which has its roots in the ideology adopted by the former USSR. So, which has its roots? What has its roots? Socialism. So it makes sense. So this is the right sentence. So every time you see some options having which, other options having present participial phrase, I mean ing form, you apply this technique. Before which, what is there? There is an, there is a noun. Then you will you will consider it. There, before which there is no noun. There is an adverb, so an action. This and some other part of speech eliminated. Look at this one. Developing countries such as India and Pakistan have adopted socialism. Restricting private investments to selected areas. Now, what does restricting private investments to selected areas modify? You know, this is a present participial phrase. So, yeah. what does this present participial phrase modify? You can't say socialism has restricted 
private inst- investments. It doesn't make sense. But there is an action perf- performed by the subject. What is the subject here? India and Pakistan is the subject. What have they done? They have adopted, they have adopted socialism. This is the action. And what is the result of the action? This is the action. And what is the result of the action? Restricting, ah, restricting private investments to selected areas. So that result can be expressed with the present participial phrase. You have an action which has a result, which is a consequence. That result or that consequence of the action could be expressed with the help of a present participial phrase. Can you come back again on this? Yes. The result of an action, the, the result of an action could be expressed with the help of the result of an action could be expressed with the help of a present participial phrase. Uh, as every time we do, we group the options, right? So when yeah, when grouping the options, we look for the common elements, differences, right? Now, what do I do? How do I group? I see that uh, only option A and uh, B have tree growth which is not present in other options. In other options, what I see woolly adelgate, woolly adelgate, right. So, what is the difference? Woolly adelgate is something living, it is a living being. It is a living being. A tree growth is something non-living. Now, I come here, I, ca- I check for uh, no, the, non, uh, the non, non-underwent part, it says by sucking sap from the young twigs of the hemlock tree. So, the moment I see ing form by sucking sap, this is nothing but a present participial modifier. This is a present participial uh, modifier. So, only a living being can suck sap. So, these two options, not the tree growth can do. So, these two options are eliminated, right. So, usually, you know, the opening phrases, the first two words or the last, see, you look at the last words, okay, the opening words and the closing words and sometimes the middle words. So, always remember this like this, uh, the first two words, the last two words or two, three words, they have some markers, they have some clues, they, they, they give you some clues. If you do not find any clues here and here, then check for the middle, middle one. So, here I have seen the growth, the growth, here I have, so these two I have eliminated, growth cannot suck this sap. At the end now, and it says end, I know what is end, here is an end, here is an end, okay. All these are what? These are nothing but parallel markers. That means this, uh, this question has both modifier errors and parallelism errors. So, I need to check for two things in this, one is the modifier, second is parallelism. So, when I check for the modifier error, A and B are eliminated. Only, oh, now, when I check the last word and here, here there is an and, here there is an and, here an and. So, after and option C has ing form yeah. or present participle. After end, if there is a present participle, the other element should also have an end. Yeah. Yeah. That is one. Uh, one more thing, before end there is a comma here, before end here there is no comma. Here also there is a comma, there is no comma here. So, if I need a comma, then I eliminate D. If I do not need a comma, I eliminate C and E. C and e. See, there are several ways, okay, several ways to eliminate. Which versus, which versus ing? Ha. Yeah. Huh. Which versus, just now we have discussed, just now. Okay. And if you look at option uh, uh, E, there is a this, oh, so many differences are there. 
that means in the beginning elements you have differences in the closing elements you have differences in the mid element the middle elements also you have differences so you have several techniques to apply here for yeah. both choosing and eliminating and i'm sure by applying this uh, parallelism technique to drop and to change which are what are they infinitives after and if there is an infinitive then before and there has to be an infinite if it strikes then simply you say option d is the answer because here you have dropping and to change here as a dropping to you have to change they are not parallel this is ing form infinite or not parallel if this doesn't strike if this doesn't strike then go for another technique you are left between uh, yes then you can go by the punctuation rule the punctuation uh, here whenever you are using and before and you will use a comma only if there is a subject after and yeah after and there is no subject option c is eliminated after and here also there is ah uh, there is there so this is the so they dropping but they dropping doesn't make sense moreover this remember yesterday's class i explained what did i explain about this and these this and these after this there should be a singular noun just yesterday i explained it right after this there has to be after this there has to be a singular noun after these there has to be a plural noun there is no singular noun here no so there are several reasons so there is a pro, so you could you also use a pronoun technique so you have modifiers you know you have modifier errors you have pronoun errors you also have punctuation errors you have you have parallelism errors oh god so you have four types of errors that is why i teach everything topic wise like this pronouns modifiers parallelism subject verb etc now the last question the last question what do i see option a and e i i and option a d e one group using detecting some okay so a c e are starting with an ing form yeah and you see fetal heart beats can be detected passive voice i told you passive voice options are least preferred i will come back to this yeah yeah using doppler ultrasound device is a present participial phrase this is yeah. the modifier this is the modifier so immediately after the modifier the element is there fetal heart beats but they don't make sense i i don't yeah. uh, there is a noun no doubt yeah. structurally it is okay but what about the logic how can heart beats use uh, ultra ultra sound device so option a is eliminated now detecting fetal heart beats by the 12th week of physician maybe i can retain this now option e using a doppler ultra sound device a physician can detect detect fetal heart beats by the 12th week of pregnancy i think yeah, it nice. ah, yeah. it so makes sense yeah. okay yeah. now option d by the 12th week of the pregnancy it, it is also says fetal heart beats can be detected passive voice now i am stuck between c and e yeah which one makes sense do you think a physician can use doppler ultrasound device by detecting the fetal heart beats or ah or do you think a physician can detect fetal heart beats by using doppler ultrasound by using so finally meaning okay after yeah. grammar i am using meaning 
So I use grammar, then I use meaning. Maybe two options are grammatically fine, but, uh, but only one of the options makes sense meaningful. Hence, option E is the answer. So, 100 percent these rules are applicable, the techniques whatever I am explaining. Yes. So, this is how you should uh, I mean approach uh, the uh, sentence correction. So, whether it is sentence correction, reading comprehension, whatever, okay, I am all